Come on into the ditch. I'm your resident ditch witch, Tara Tyne, and we're having a day off, but I'm gonna bring you with me anyway. I was lucky enough to get a spin out of town over the weekend, now that five kilometer restrictions have been lifted. With the ancient Irish festival of Beltana happening around the time I'm releasing this video, it seemed like a good time to get out and immerse myself in nature. So we made stops in the Lurgan, Lordship, Jenkinstown, and the magical Ravensdale forest. Okay, so we've just come to this fork in the road and we had a vague idea that there's a fairy ring up there and uh, Mysterious Paul said uh, what's down there? Probably nothing. And sure, we stuck our heads down to see and can you imagine our surprise when we came across the fairy ring? Will I zoom in and show you? And you see it in there, a circle of stones. Now I don't know anything about this. I came across pictures of it when I was making my Wisdom from Louth video there a few weeks back. And I thought, wow, I've never seen that. So if anybody knows about this, drop it in the comments. Let us know. It's very, very pretty. So, um... We might just make a little offering and then leave because, do you know, we couldn't be dealing with them shenanigans today, folks. That is, that's actually the last thing we need now on our lovely day in the forest. We have just come across our next landmark here in Ravensdale Forest. This beautiful cottage, ruins of a beautiful cottage, which we believe is quite probably the old hunting lodge. Look at that beautiful arch over the door there in red brick. And it's all just covered in moss. It's so quaint, so absolutely beautiful. And I could so see myself living here. Mm. Yeah, I could be like, you know, like that hermit that lives on the edge of town. Ornamental hermit and just sort of comes out and scowls at people and gives you directions in exchange for buns. Although we have spotted what may be the actual hunting lodge. You can see it just down there between the trees. We're going to head down to it now. Uh, I'm going to just turn the camera off because there's quite a lot of roots and stones and, you know, dips in the ground and I don't want to break my neck on the way down. But they're appearing from between the trees. Absolutely gorgeous. Has my name written all over it. Now, I wouldn't be big for hunting. I mean, you know, unless there was like rabbits looking at me funny. Oh, that tree coming up in the front. It's a pity about that. Now you can see that that is just doing a lot of damage to the roof up there. I mean, it's still, it's still a fabulous tree. Look at it. So strong and structured and... Oh gosh, look at this little place. Well, it's not that little actually. It's, it's a lovely sized well in house but it would have been a hunting lodge so there would have been people just come up here and stayed during hunting season and made themselves at home and probably had lots of rabbit stew oh it's absolutely gorgeous some uh, very colorful graffiti from the local artists there oh, look at that scalloped detail on the roof oh it's so witchy so, so witchy. Oh, I absolutely love it. We can see in the windows. Look at that. Look at that huge big fireplace. Oh, I love it. I could so see me there with my cauldron hanging. Wow, I mean, the place is in surprisingly good, Nick. Do you think anyone would notice if I just moved in? We've got some 
<laughs> barbed wire on the windows. On sorry, on one window, the other two are quite open. And um, if you do happen to be up in the area, you know, please don't see this and think, oh, that's a great place to go doing air rifling or lighting fires or anything like that. Like, let's not do any more damage to this beautiful old house. It's such a joy to come across in the middle of the forest. And also it's quite probably not very structurally sound. So yeah, let's not go tempting fate, shall we? The great thing about the Cooley Mountains, or actually really about mountains in Ireland in general, is that they're really only hills. So you can actually get to the top of the mountain pretty quickly and feel the achievement of having just climbed a mountain without actually having to climb a mountain. So this is my Baltana celebration, up a mountain, peace and quiet. We have a little controlled fire lit here um, just to celebrate Baltana. It uh, would have been a done thing, an old tradition in Ireland to march your livestock between two fires. Now, lighting two fires really seems a bit wasteful when I don't actually have any livestock and a community full of people to march between them. So I've just lit one little fire. We'll let it burn for about 20 minutes and let it go out then again. And um, I thought, you know, I don't have livestock, but what I can do is um, march my vlog past the fire. You know, my channel, my herd full of vlogs. And uh, the point of this is to ward away fairies and bad luck for the year. So we're gonna do that now consciously as a blessing, as a healing, as a cleansing for me and for all of you who are watching. Beltana Hanna Dave. So we just went a little bit off trail there. I do love a good off trail adventure, I have to say. And we've come across this beautiful ridge and I don't know if you can make out sort of the little rock falls of water there. It's so beautiful. I'm pretty sure I camped up here when I was younger, but yeah, I just had to show you some of the magic gorgeousness that we've been experiencing today. I feel so chilled up here, actually. The problem when I come up into this forest is that I never want to leave. The other thing is, is that I believe this is the one main river that actually runs through Ravensdale Forest. So I'm pretty sure that there is a connection between on Morrigan and a river in Ravensdale because somebody said it in my comment section a couple of months back, can't find the comment again for love nor money. So. If there's somebody watching this out there who knows about the Morrigan Ravensdale possibly river connection, drop it in the comments, let me know. I'm gonna follow it up this time. You come across so many just ancient walls and whoop, <laughs> tripping over and killing myself. Look at that beautiful old stone pillar. This was obviously a gateway to something on your way up the mountain or a milestone marker perhaps but yeah it's just you know it's like hollowed ground up here even the name Ravensdale is fantastic you've the constant call of birds and the distant sound of the river in most parts of it it's just absolutely gorgeous there's walking trails the whole way through it yeah, lovely stuff. And that is it. We are just coming down the last stretch of the forest path now. You can kind of just see the, the paddock and that of the equestrian centre below. But it's just been an absolutely gorgeous afternoon. Yeah, just thought I'd share that little moment of peace with you all. Take two sticks from the forest and a breath of cool breeze. Gotta get some peace.
peace of mind Gotta get me some peace Our next stop on our magical mountain ramblings was the Magic Hill. Locals will be familiar with this natural phenomenon where vehicles test gravity and roll uphill. It's usually one of the first places that we take visitors. Here we are on the flat section. You can see that ambulance, okay? Just coming down the hill towards us, appeared over the brow of the hill there, as did that car, see? Yeah, it's a hill. Okay, hands are off the wheel, feet are off the pedals. There is, oh, you can't see, yeah, feet are off the pedals, and we are still, oh, my camera's freaking out, wow. The fairies are at work, folks, the fairies are at work. They don't want me to show you the evidence that this hill, as small as it might be, is now magic. Going now we're going down the other side. Okay, the magic hill. I'm on the town. When people come to visit friends and family here in Loud, the next place we'll often take them when we're out this far is to the Windy Gap, also known as the Long Woman's Grave. It's another of our tall local tales, which centres around a Spanish noblewoman who was said to be seven foot tall and descended from the O'Donnells of Ulster and the second son of O'Hanlon, a chief of Omeath, who died and left his two sons as land. The elder brother Con tricked Lorcan the younger and presented him with this bleak and austere hollow in the landscape for as far as the eye could see. I mean, if he'd been buddies with Bridget, she might have lent him our magic expanding cloak, but sure luck it. Lorcan just got on with things and became quite successful as a sea merchant. A bit of a hero he was, according to the tale, and he saved the lives of a Spanish nobleman and his daughter from pirates whilst on a voyage in Cadiz in Spain. He fell in love with the daughter, Kathleen, and was offered her hand in marriage upon her condition that he'd give up seafaring and settle in Ireland. When they had married and Lorcan brought Kathleen home to show her his land, for as far as the eye could see, which wasn't very far, Kathleen thought her husband had played a cruel trick on her. Lorcan, mi amor, is this all? Yeah, love, sorry about that. Oh! And fell down dead on the spot from shock. In another version, she stepped in to prevent Lorcan being killed when fighting with his brother upon their return. No pataran! And was killed. Make what you will of that story, but it's been around for a long time, and so has her grave, which currently stands at over 36 foot long. It would have been rude not to visit when we're out this far. <laughs> We're now out at Station House, which is probably one of the many properties along the Dundalk Carlingford Road, which used to be in service of the railway, the Great Northern Railway that we had. And yeah, there are remnants of that all over the place. So we're just coming back towards Dundalk now, a beautiful sunny spin, full of magic, sort of. Oh, I'm not sure maybe we'd stop for an ice cream on the way. Okay, and here we are at the Blue Anchor, Lurgan Point. And straight across there, you can see the Lord Limerick Embankment. Well, at least where it starts. We just spoke to a lady there above in Lordship, um, down sort of at the coast, and she lived in the cottages down near the sea there and she did have an auntie who used to walk across from here where we are at Belargan Point every week with a flat wicker basket on her back called a key she believed to carry the fish across to sell them in town which I thought was just a really really nice story. It's interesting just to think of uh, the pathways that we don't really know about these days, but were so important to people in the past. So, after a day spent travelling some of these paths in celebration of Baltana and the coming of summer, 
It was time to go home again. Frankly, it was time for tea. Also, there'll hopefully be a third video out this week to celebrate us reaching a thousand subscribers. Sorry it's a wee bit late coming, I'm just a wee bit busy making hay while the sun shines so I can share even more fun and witchy adventures with you wonderful people. So for now, Slánach is Bánacht. Goodbye and good luck to you. Home, I can feel the rain, I can see your face again. Yeah, one day soon I'm coming home. Home, where my heart lies and my spirit flies. Home, to be near you, look into your eyes. Home, where beginning ends and I can't pretend. Yeah, one day. Coming home